Welcome to the Language and Interpreter session covering the new Dynamic Web Client. I'm Nick Decker, part of the BASIS DWC team, and together we'll take an in-depth look at BASIS's latest client offering. Before starting, let's have a quick overview of the topics that we'll be covering in this session. After the introduction, we'll cover BASIS's motivating factors that compelled us to write a brand new client. We'll look at several implementation details, including how we improved initial load time, facilitated responsive design, improved styling capabilities, and promoted extensibility. We'll then cover how the new client differentiates itself from BUI and list which controls are ready for use and which controls the new client won't support. Then we'll run a few demos, including legacy examples from the Guide to GUI Programming and BBJ document. Those programs will also help us examine the low-level network traffic statistics to analyze initial load time characteristics. Then we'll take a sneak peek at the DWC Themer app and use it to generate a theme that we'll apply to a sample application. I'll then hand the rest of the presentation off to Stefan Wald, a DWC teammate, to cover a bespoke, production-ready application that his Basis Europe team built specifically for the Dynamic Web Client. Lastly, we'll take some time for questions and answers. When Basis first unveiled the Browser User Interface, or BUI, client at TechCon 2009, it propelled graphical business basic applications into the world of the web browser. Although BUI was still under development at the time, Basis showed how it was suddenly possible to run new and exciting GUI applications almost anywhere. All that you needed was a browser that could handle HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The BUI client freed BBJ applications from the traditional constraints of requiring a desktop class computer with a Java virtual machine pre-installed. Fast forward to TechCon 21 and Basis is at it again, reimagining the possibilities by introducing a new browser-based client that's also still under development. This session serves as an introduction to the latest Basis graphical client, the Dynamic Web Client or DWC for short. During this session, we'll cover what motivated Basis to create a new client, how it differs from the existing thin client and buoy clients, the current implementation status of various BBJ controls, and of course, we'll have a few demos to put the new client through its paces and show you what it's capable of. Motivation for a new type of client. I know what you're probably thinking. Why is Basis writing a brand new client instead of just improving upon BUI? Well, for starters, we did make improvements to BUI to optimize the initial load times. We changed BUI to defer its loading of select JavaScript and CSS that typical apps rarely use or aren't even applicable in certain environments, such as tooltip support in a touch environment. We also employed GWT code splitting to segment the BUI JavaScript code into separate code bundles that are delivered on demand to the browser. And while those optimizations made measurable improvements in performance, there are still several desirable enhancements and features that we just couldn't shoehorn into the BUI client, such as improving the initial load time by dramatically reducing the amount of JavaScript and CSS code from the server to the client which ultimately means removing the Google Web Toolkit from the client. Adding support for flow layouts, integrating CSS layout technologies, and being able to offer responsive and adaptive layouts that are fully contained on the client to avoid making round trips between the client and the remote server that slow down application execution. Overhauling the CSS and customization system by completely redesigning the concept of styling from the ground up and adding new theming capabilities. Basis designed BUI over a decade ago based on the prevailing web standards and browser features from that era. But the web in 2021 is a dramatically different place than it was in 2009, as it offers advanced technologies like CSS custom properties that just weren't available when we first designed BUI. And finally, Basis had an explicit goal for BUI to replicate as closely as possible its GUI appearance in the browser. While we haven't abandoned that aim in the DWC, there are areas where we've purposely broken ties with the past in order to provide a modern user experience, 
such as abandoning the old BBJ Grid in favor of the JavaScript BBJ Grid EX widget. Additionally, the new client no longer mandates precise, down to the pixel fidelity as it sizes controls. By default, the DWC doesn't use the same font size as Bowie as it would be antithetical to today's web standards and would ultimately detract from the user's experience. But because we realize that backward compatibility is important, we've added compatibility flags so that you can gradually move your apps into the future. Implementation details. Now that we've recognized the need for a new client with a modern architecture, let's look at how we designed the DWC to realize some of our previously mentioned goals. The first goal is improving speed. Improved load time. As they say, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Or in web lingo, the first content full paint is critical. Bowie's strategy is to pass everything over to the client that it will ever need. JavaScript code for GWT and jQuery UI, used for tooltips, about half of Bowie itself, style sheets for the GWT, the Bowie default CSS, and jQuery UI, in addition to images for the window controls and icon. The new client takes a distinctive approach to optimize data transfer and to minimize the time needed before the user can interact with the application. When the user launches a DWC app, we load just a tiny chunk, only about 2.5 kilobytes, of JavaScript to bootstrap the session. After that, we dynamically download individual messages, or chunks of JavaScript, on demand as the application uses the corresponding functionality. For example, the server only sends the client the JavaScript necessary to build a BBJ menu button when the application creates its very first menu button. This results in measurable improvements to the initial load time, which results in a better user experience. Responsive design. Years ago, computers were primarily desktop machines with monitors that ran in a few standardized resolutions. That fit well with BBJ's pixel-oriented positioning, as the client's screen space was predictable. But today's user runs applications on a variety of devices, operating systems, and screen sizes, and they expect to run web apps on whatever device they have handy, whether it's a phone, tablet, or laptop. That's one reason why the mobile-first principle is so important in product design. And one key to mobile-first design is responsive web design, which describes sites and apps that adapt their layout to the user's browser viewport. By making use of flow layouts, CSS Grid, and Flexbox, as well as media queries, developers can ensure that their applications run well on the user's hardware. This leads to increased user adoption, improved user experience, and ultimately, faster development and easier maintenance of the code base. By default, the new client continues to use absolute sizes and positions, preserving the standard BBJ behavior from Visual Pro 5, BBJ GUI, and BBJ Bowie. But when developers are ready to build a responsive app, they can set a window creation flag to take full control of the sizing and positioning with CSS. They can then size controls based on the available screen space, and even define multiple layout patterns based on the screen size or orientation. This makes it possible for apps to dynamically respond and adapt to the viewport, ensuring the best user experience. Improved Styling Capabilities Like Bowie, the DWC offers extensive support for external CSS to customize the look and feel of BBJ controls in web applications. However, many developers found that writing custom CSS could be a daunting endeavor. Besides needing to learn the CSS language, it's especially challenging to debug CSS when the properties and values that you wrote don't have the desired effect. Difficulties aside, customers also requested the ability to create themes so that they could more easily brand their web apps for their target customers. Keeping these matters in mind, Basis completely redesigned CSS styling from the ground up for the DWC, integrating new concepts such as CSS custom properties, directives, and attributes. 
CSS custom properties, also known as CSS variables, allow developers to set the value of a single CSS property once and have that take effect all throughout the app. The DWC's custom properties cover all aspects of an app's look and feel and empower developers to set values to affect their app's colors, typography, spacing, borders, and even animations. In contrast, making these kinds of changes in BUI demands considerable knowledge of the default CSS file and would require changing dozens of lines of CSS in the 2,000 plus lines of CSS source code. But by taking advantage of custom properties, these changes are simple in the DWC. For example, you can assign the font size for every control by setting the value of the BBJ font size custom property, either in an external CSS file or dynamically at runtime. We can make changes to the CSS properties programmatically and see our app instantly update its appearance when we execute the following line of code in a DWC app. The setStyle method, introduced in BBJ 18, is normally used to set a particular CSS style for a control, but we can now use the method along with directives to achieve different effects. The at root parameter in the previous example matches the root element of the browser's document tree, so we can use it to override the basis default custom properties instantly at runtime. Other directives, such as at element, allow us to define a component style for a particular control. And we can specify the at global directive when adding global styles that are intended for multiple controls, such as defining animations. These two directives support nesting styles, so it's possible to dive deep into the control's parts if desired. Better yet, developers can bundle groups of CSS properties and their chosen values to define a theme, which they can apply to a DWC app in a single line of code. Later in this session, we'll take a sneak peek at a what you see is what you get theme editor that Basis is writing and how it can create customized themes. Many of the BBJ controls in the DWC also offer extended attributes, which give us even more ways to influence a control. Attributes such as theme and expanse let us apply predetermined types to these BBJ buttons. Up until now, if you ever wanted to inject and execute JavaScript code, you would need to include a BBJ HTML view control in your application. That's still true for the GUI client, but as of BBJ 21.10, the BUI and DWC clients allow you to do so via the BBJ SysGUI object. Because they are already running in a browser, if we want to work with JavaScript but don't have a need for the HTML view control in our app, we can use the BBJ SysGUI object to accomplish several tasks, including injecting internal CSS at runtime by appending it to the document, injecting a JavaScript library like jQuery to make working with JavaScript easier, injecting a third-party JavaScript library's code, JavaScript and CSS, or using JavaScript functions or libraries for date and time parsing, color conversions, etc. Extensibility The dynamic web client uses the web component architecture to create BBJ controls in a modular fashion. This is another area where Basis has taken advantage of newer technology that just wasn't available when we designed BUI. Web components are a set of features that provide a standard component model for the web. Their individual parts, such as the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that compose the control, are scoped so that they won't conflict with the other elements on the page. Web components are also lightweight, performant, and all the major web browsers support them. The new client will also support web components to add new controls beyond what GUI and BUI currently offer, or to provide an alternative to an existing BBJ control. This will require some sophisticated programming, but it's already possible to swap out the default BBJ button with a web component, such as this app that is using shoelace buttons. How the DWC differs from BUI Basis designed and wrote the BUI client over a decade ago using the Google Web Toolkit. Through the years, we've continued to make improvements to the client when and where possible, including designing a completely new default CSS theme in 2013. 
As mentioned earlier, we recently optimized some of the underlying communications between the client and the server via code splitting to decrease the initial application load time. Even though Buoy isn't the latest client, it continues to provide a straightforward path for publishing vPro5 and BBJ GUI apps to the web. And if you write your application code in the BDT Eclipse plugin, registering and launching a BBJ GUI application in Buoy is as simple as clicking a tool button. With the recent availability of the new dynamic web client in the BBJ 21.10 release, which client should you target when you write your next app or application module? Before answering that question, it's important to point out that your applications do not have to be written just for Buoy or just for the DWC. You can write applications in a compatible manner so that they work well in both clients. And if you'd like to take advantage of the DWC's unique features, you can always check the value of info of 3,6 to determine which client is in use at runtime. But if you are targeting a single client, the answer really depends on several factors, such as how important is control sizing and placement? If you require precise pixel fidelity, then Buoy is the simple choice. But the DWC may still be an option if you set a global string table entry to force it to use the same font sizes as Buoy. Is there need for dynamic layouts? If your customers expect to run the app on a variety of screen sizes, then the DWC is the best choice. You can still make use of the BBMIG layout manager in Buoy, but just be aware that when the user resizes or rotates their device, the layout routines will require round trips between the client and server. Are you working with an existing code base, or is this a new project or module? If you're working with an existing code base, it's probably easiest to start in Buoy since that more closely replicates the thin client environment, which is likely the original target client for the app. How important is theming, or the ability to customize aspects of the app, such as color accents, font sizes, padding, and spacing? While you can customize the appearance of your app in both clients, it's significantly easier to do so in the DWC. Implementation status. Now that you have a better idea of what the DWC offers, you may be ready to take the new client out for a test drive. But before doing so, we should cover which controls Basis has already implemented, what happens when you try to instantiate an unimplemented control, and which controls the DWC will not support. What hasn't been implemented yet? For starters, the list of implemented controls is pretty large, so it's probably easiest to cover which controls the DWC does not yet support, which includes the BBJ tree, BBJ tab control, BBJ scroll bar, BBJ file chooser, BBJ color chooser, BBJ font chooser, doc child windows, and the mini console. Some of those controls are being actively worked on now, and others, like the BBJ color chooser, have a workaround. That's because we can use the color version of the BBJ edit box, as covered in the TechCon 15 session on HTML5 improvements. And even if the file chooser control isn't ready yet, the file open and file save functions are complete. Besides these controls, the dynamic web client doesn't yet support concepts such as the BBJ, MDI, and full keyboard navigation. Unimplemented controls. So what happens when you attempt to run a program with an unsupported control? The browser's developer tools console displays a series of errors detailing undefined calling functions, and the app will terminate. Sure, it's a tad abrupt, but at least it's easy to tell when you've run across an unsupported control type. What won't be implemented? As it stands today, the only control that Basis does not plan on implementing in the DWC is the BBJ grid. The BBJ grid is a complex component, and we don't want to just copy the existing buoy implementation without making significant changes. Instead, Basis recommends using the BBJ Grid EX widget, the plugin that's a fast, feature rich grid component that's optimized to display large data sets. It offers extended features that go far above and beyond the BBJ Grid, 
such as sorting, filtering, and searching globally or by column, column grouping, conditional styling, pivot modes, ad hoc charting capabilities, and more. Demos Even though the dynamic web client is still being developed and won't be ready for pervasive production usage for quite some time, Basis has implemented enough of the systems and controls so that many basic programs, pun very much intended, run equally well in Bowie and the new client. And for those of you who enjoy living life on the edge, writing new programs can be exciting when you take advantage of the DWC's advanced features. For the rest of the presentation, we'll look at a few programs running in the DWC to get some real-world experience with its capabilities. The Guide to GUI Programming in BBJ to get an idea of how the DWC compares to Basis's other clients, we'll start by taking examples from the Guide to GUI Programming in BBJ. Besides covering all of the concepts of GUI programming, it includes many examples that show different ways of writing GUI programs. We'll look at the Visual Pro 5 GUI using mnemonics program and the BBJ GUI using custom object program. And we'll run them in all three clients, GUI, Buoy and the dynamic web client. The take-home point here is that the new client is compatible with existing programs and varied programming styles, regardless of whether they use callbacks or read records, mnemonics or object-oriented syntax, custom objects, resource files, and so on. The major difference is the appearance of the app in each of the clients, as they have their own look and feels determined by the platform in GUI, the basis default CSS in Bowie, and the CSS custom properties in the dynamic web client. It's worth mentioning that we have made no changes to the code samples in the programming guide. Both programs run without modifications in all three of the clients, including the new dynamic web client. Browser statistics. Now that we can easily compare a sample app running in both Bowie and the DWC, we can look under the covers and compare the browser statistics. This is a quantitative way of comparing the efficiency of the two clients for network communications. And it's a good way for us to see what kind of real-world difference there is between the different Bowie and DWC strategies for delivering JavaScript and other resources to the client's browser. Recall that Bowie sends the CSS and JavaScript for the Google Web Toolkit whereas the DWC only delivers the JavaScript messages that are needed to build the controls actually used in the program. By recording a session in our browser's developer tools, we view every low-level event, as well as getting totals in the areas of interest such as number of requests, the number of actual bytes transferred, and total resources sent. The latter two figures sound the same, but recall that network communications includes content encoding which is used to compress the actual data before transfer. Therefore, due to gzip compression, the number of bytes transported is much smaller compared to the size of those resources after they're downloaded and uncompressed. Overall, the DWC made measurably fewer requests, transferred fewer bytes, and the weight of those files once they're uncompressed was a small fraction of the size of the buoy resources transferred. If we're interested in digging deeper, we can compare particular resource types and focus just on JavaScript, or CSS. Because of the Google Web Toolkit, Bowie's JavaScript load was significantly higher than the DWC's and took up a majority of the transferred bytes. Due to the DWC's messaging strategy, transferring its JavaScript took a more reasonable 25% or so of the data sent to the client. And when we look at image resources, the DWC devotes fewer requests to graphics. This is partly because the new client employs scalable vector graphics for the window controls, relying on CSS to provide the hover and active versions of the images. In comparison, Bowie transfers a unique image for each of the window control button states, normal, hovered, and active. So not only is the DWC's method more efficient when it comes to requests, the images are now vector-based so they scale well and look great on high DPI screens. In summary, these results are exactly what we had hoped for and expected, given the DWC's distinctive load time strategy. However, it's nice to verify that this approach really does work 
and decreases the amount of initial content that the server needs to send to the client's browser to launch a BBJ app. The DWC Themer Next, let's look at the DWC Themer app, which is a WYSIWYG theme editor BBJ program running in the new client. That first sentence was a bit of a mouthful, so let's break it down. First, a theme editor acts as a visual assistant that allows users to create or modify a theme that they can subsequently apply to their applications in order to customize its look and feel. The WYSIWYG portion stands for What You See Is What You Get, meaning that you can see how your changes affect BBJ controls in real time. You can think of the DWC Themer app as an easy way to manage many of the BBJ CSS custom properties in a graphical manner. After all, it's significantly easier to select the desired color from a color picker, color wheel, or even a pre-existing palette, as opposed to writing CSS code using RGB or HSL values directly. As an example, we'll click on the primary color swatch, and then select several color options. Notice how all the BBJ control samples in the right-hand pane instantly update their appearance based on the new value of the BBJ primary color hue. That's because CSS custom properties behave just like variables in a BBX program. When you change the value of the variable, then the client browser instantly re-renders every UI component that uses that variable to determine its appearance. If you've ever tried to write CSS before, you'll instantly recognize that defining CSS colors in this manner is much easier, much faster, and frankly, much more fun than writing CSS code in a text editor. More customization. The DWC themer breaks down the available CSS custom properties into several high-level categories, such as colors, typography, borders, spacing, and more. For each of the custom properties in these categories, you can choose a preset value from a list. As a case in point, we can set the base font size by selecting values such as the BBJ font size extra extra small, all the way up to the BBJ font size extra 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 large. But since the app uses BBJ list edit controls for input, if you know a modicum of CSS, you can type in your own values, such as 15px to set the font size to 15 pixels. The app accepts any valid CSS units, so you can specify the font size in points, inches, millimeters, or even percentages of the viewport. Layout Strategies The Themer app also serves as an example of how we can use CSS to achieve responsive and dynamic layouts. We'll start by viewing the app in the advanced mode, which includes a panel for previewing the CSS custom properties and their current values. When we run the app in portrait mode, meaning that the viewport has more vertical than horizontal space, the CSS preview pane is on the bottom of the app. This makes sense because we have extra vertical screen space. And since we have limited horizontal screen space, we're devoting it entirely to the left-hand configuration parameters panel and the right-hand BBJ controls preview pane. The layout changes though once we switch the orientation to landscape mode. Now that the vertical space is limited, the app positions the CSS preview pane vertically between the configuration parameters and the BBJ controls preview panes. Finally, notice how once we get past a threshold, the app dedicates all the extra horizontal space to the BBJ controls preview pane, displaying more controls as the viewport permits. So how does the DWC Themer app achieve this type of dynamic layout? We use the CSS grid layout for most of the app's layout strategy, but we also took advantage of media queries to alter the layout based on the viewport's width and height. Again, this means that the client's browser will handle the layout changes, requiring no round-trip communications to the server. By using the grid CSS display type, we can define a two-dimensional grid-based layout system that, compared to any web layout system of the past, completely changes the way we deal with user interfaces. 
And even if you're not yet a CSS expert, it's possible to get a jump start with the CSS Grid by using one of the many online interactive CSS Grid generators. In fact, we found it easiest to define the app's portrait and landscape layouts by using one of these online generators, copying and pasting the CSS code. It's also noteworthy that the DWC Themer app doesn't need or use any external CSS files. We produced all of the custom styling and layout via the BBJ API by making use of both existing methods like set style and newer methods that give us control over each part of the BBJ controls. Exporting and importing themes. The DWC Themer app's primary goal is to let users easily change the values of CSS custom properties, which users can then apply to their other applications later. To show this, we'll make a couple of simple themes where we've set the primary hue as well as the font family, size, and spacing properties. We already have a UIKit application that's composed of a BBJ program and an ASCII resource file that we created in Window Builder. Before we apply any of the themes, though, let's compare that program running in the three clients, GUI, Buoy, and the new Dynamic Web Client. Right off the bat, we can see that the font size in the DWC is larger than it is in Buoy. That's because it's not trying to mirror BBJ GUI font sizes, which mirrored Visual Pro 5 font sizes, which mirrored Windows 95's font size. Note that setting a compatibility flag is one way that we can affect the font size, as shown in this version of the app. Previewing the themes. After right-clicking on the window, the app displays a pop-up menu, allowing us to select a theme. The menu lists the DWC's two built-in themes first, the light theme and the dark theme. These are application-level themes that are always available and they're internally defined by setting values of, you guessed it, CSS variables. By default, the app starts off in the DWC's light application theme, as indicated by the checked menu item. But we can choose to switch to the DWC's dark theme instead, which is accomplished with this line of code. Now let's see what happens when we apply one of the custom themes that we created in the DWC Themer app. We'll start by loading the green theme, which sets the primary hue to green and increases the font size and spacing. As expected, these changes are pretty clear once we change from the dark theme to our custom theme, especially since we've chosen a script font. Notice that the radio button did not turn green like the checkbox. That's because BBJ radio buttons are functionally complete, but we haven't yet completed the code that overrides the default HTML representation for a radio button. Therefore, we get a unique opportunity to see what a control looks like in the DWC when it doesn't pay attention to any of the CSS variables. When we select our custom purple theme, the app changes its appearance once again, but this time it sets the font family to something a little bit more professional and it decreases the default font size and control spacing. Looking back. At the beginning of this session, we discussed Basis's high-level goals for the Dynamic Web Client, including reducing an app's initial load time, adding support for CSS-based layouts, and improving the styling capabilities. Our data transfer analysis in our browser's developer tools showed that eliminating the Google Web Toolkit along with other optimization strategies, had a significant impact and measurably decreased our app's load time. And our preview of the DWC Themer app proved that we could use CSS Grid to define dynamic layouts for a variety of screen sizes and orientations. It also demonstrated how we can exploit the power of CSS custom properties to personalize an application's appearance. We could even group a few custom properties and their values together to form a simple theme, which we can handily apply to our entire application with one method call. So even though the DWC is still a work in progress, it's already proven itself as a compelling way to launch your BBJ graphical applications into a web browser 
using the latest and greatest web technologies. Now we will have a look at the BBJ Dynamic Web Client app in action. One of the first apps that the Basis Professional Services team had developed for the Dynamic Web Client is called P360 and is created in collaboration with the Canadian ERP vendor Phoenix Business Systems out of Quebec. After having a closer look at what the app does and why Phoenix has decided to work with Basis to create it, I will give you a short live demo of it. After the demo, I will put a focus on the alternatives that had been considered and explain why Basis and Phoenix decided together to implement it in a dynamic web client. Phoenix edits an ERP package that covers everything needed to run a business in wholesale of construction materials, bath and kitchen equipment and similar. The P360 mobile app will mainly be used by contractors who can look up material, place orders, request quotations. In addition to inventory and ordering, customers gain online access to documents such as past quotations, orders or invoices. A high quality in visual design was important to Phoenix. They had hired a professional graphics designer to design the visual appearance of the app and the end user experience. Mobile devices such as smartphones will be the primary client environment where the app will be used. The application in the back is already running on BBJ. However, one requirement was to make the app pluggable into other third-party ERP systems at later time so that it can be sold or rented not only to existing clients running the Phoenix application, but to many more who are today running other solutions. Let's jump right into a live demo of a few screens. In my iPhone emulator, I have navigated to the page where BBJ hosts the DWC app of P360. And the first thing I do is I'll add the app to the home screen. This will give the DWC app in the iPhone a natural app-like behavior. After logging in, we see the categories of our demo data being populated. We can use gestures to scroll down and navigate into a category that lists a couple of items. When we scroll down with a gesture, we see that once the scroll region hits the last row, there is more data loaded. This is thanks to the new BBJ Dynamic Web Client Infinite Scroll feature. We can also use the full text search that has been improved using Lucene. Now let's put an item to the shopping cart and we see that the tab control allows us to introspect the cart, navigate to the next step of the checkout and ultimately finalize and place our order. Let's open the drawer menu. We see there are a few menu items, one of which allows us to show the past invoices. Clicking on one invoice opens the PDF document in a natural behavior on the iPhone. A highlight of the P360 app is the link to a virtual reality showroom that one of its first customers has created for his physical store. The interactive tool allows the user to walk around the exhibition space on the screen of his smartphone, view items and item descriptions, while seeing directly how they could be combined with others. This functionality is an enabler tool for additional sales. The contractor can, while being on the construction site with his customer, chatting with his client, show and propose solutions directly without losing time. Additional features like the ability to contact the store and chat within the app make the solution complete. Now let's look at some code details. The P360 app makes use of modern CSS functionality. It uses CSS animations for a smooth opening and closing of the drawer. CSS media queries allow flexible sizing in relation to the device's viewport size. And as a last example of modern CSS capabilities, it uses web fonts to display a nice representation of the weather icon in the drawer menu. Here's the menu. You can see the smooth open and close animation, the two clouds that represent the current weather loaded by a web font. 
Switching over to Eclipse, we can inspect the source code of the drawer panel. You can see it's standard BBJ code we wrote for this app in a nicely laid out clean object oriented code. Let's jump to the methods that open and close the drawer. The calls to remove style and add style on the drawer panel, which itself is a BBJ child window, add and remove the CSS class names drawer show respectively drawer height. In the according CSS file, we find these two classes. We see that they address two animations, one called draw height and one called draw show, both determined to take half a second to execute. The two animations do nothing more than move the panel outside the viewport or back in. All this is executed entirely inside the browser client, without any BBJ code that would compute the path of pixel positions as you would have needed in former GUI or BUI. The server is kept free from these tasks and unnecessary round trips are avoided. The drawer menu shows the local weather conditions on top. For that purpose, the team implemented a separate reusable widget in BBJ that is loaded into the child window of the drawer. Again, you see a bunch of BBJ child windows and other controls that receive CSS class names and styles with BBJ's API functions we have added for that purpose. The widget is self-contained and responsible for fetching the weather conditions directly for the user's location. Some BBJ static text receive the data. One of these static text controls has the CSS class weather icon, which is wired with the weather icons font, so that setting a simple character to the static text control is sufficient to show the icon on screen. Further, we see how the weather widget is using CSS media queries to be rendered smaller on smaller phone screens, so that it does not occupy the majority of screen space when there is only limited screen real estate. The drawer of the P360 app shows a nice compilation of three CSS concepts that were not possible with BUI before. The DWC made it simple and straightforward to use them for this new app. A few more improvements are worth mentioning. The team has added a so-called manifest file to make the app behave like an industry standard progressive web app. This greatly facilitates the steps for the user to save a link to the app on the home screen of his phone. We also have seen the infinite scroll that you can now implement with DWC and also the Lucene search capabilities, which have been enhanced. Basis is proud that with the new dynamic web client, the expectation to match the designer's visual design as close as possible has been met. Basis created a responsive application for mobile devices. And thanks to the new dynamic web client, there were virtually no limitations to using CSS to achieve the desired results. Unlike for BUI, the effort in the dynamic web client to add CSS was similar to the effort it would have taken in other web frameworks. Developers could immediately apply commonly available knowledge about web page design with CSS. As the UI and the logic are both written in BBJ, a language all team members are well familiar with, the project was very efficient. At the same time, everybody had fun exploring the new freedom the Dynamic Web Client offers with its open support for CSS and standard JavaScript in the UI client. Team members who also did work in Google's Flutter framework before were quickly productive as well. Using BBJ for the complete stack of this app was the right choice. Before we had started, the customer was tempted to select the path of a native iOS app written in Swift with REST web services in the back. They didn't believe that BBJ could match the design they wanted. But not only could we match the design, everybody was rewarded with a much smaller lead time and project cost. But by choosing BBJ, the app will now not only run on iOS devices, but at the same time on Android, on Windows, which will more than triple the group of potential users worldwide. In direct comparison, BBJ allows you to achieve similar results in the language you know without the need to learn other languages or frameworks. Debugging remains in one single place, and thanks to BBJ's web client, your app will run on any device that can run web apps today, Android, iOS, Windows, and even more. With the dynamic web client, the tipping point of selecting a native development platform has shifted substantially. Only a few use cases may lead to a decision for going native with your next app. The most prominent example would be when your app has to work offline without network coverage. There are a few more like interfacing with sensors and other specific things like Bluetooth connections, where you may choose a native app development platform like Flutter. 
For most other use cases, writing your next app in the PBJ Dynamic Web Client will save you time, money and effort, and avoids the caveats of getting your app listed with Apple and Google's app stores. We believe web apps are the future of mobile computing in the context of professional business applications, not native apps. Choose PBJ's Dynamic Web Client. No need to learn something else, no duplication of logic and code, just keep everything in one place. As the P360 app proves, PBJ's Dynamic Web Client is a viable alternative to native app development and compares to other modern web development frameworks that you could use for web apps. With the Dynamic Web Client, the boundaries between PBJ and having to use something else have substantially shifted towards PBJ. In most cases, you don't need much more than PBJ and maybe some JavaScript.